Okay, fine. I know I'm not the most qualified person for this show, but just try me out. Give me like three months with no pay. I want to try this job. And if it doesn't work out, um, you can just let me go. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are staying safe, staying indoors. Um, in this area where there's so much happening. So yeah, and thinking about it, this might be the best time to read that book you always wanted to read. I mean, there's so much time now. You can, if you are staying at home or what, you can decide to like indulge, Just read that book you've always been postponing to read. So today, our nearest read is uh, The Wind in My Hair by Masi Al Alinejad. Um, so today, my newest read, um, The Wind in My Hair by Masi Ali Nehajad. I hope, I hope that is how you pronounce it. Um, yeah, if you know me, if you watch my other reviews, you know that I love reading books written by women and to know what they are going through, what they are struggling with and how they just, they just overcome life's challenges. So this, um, I read this book um, about this Iranian woman, an Iranian journalist. Currently, she's living in New York. Um, I think she can't go back to Iran. Um, she started a movement where she was encouraging women to remove their veils. Um, and she says, um, yeah, like in Iran, and it, it is a um, law that women have to wear veils. So she says she's not against the law, but more so she wants people to have the right to choose. If you want to not cover your hair, you have that right. If you don't want to cover that hair, if you don't want, then you can wear the veil. So, more so she is for the freedom that women should be given a choice to choose whether they want to cover their hair or not. And she says it like, given it's a law, like women are harassed, if, if just you find like a few strands of your hair are popping out from your veil. So, and she was just saying, okay, fine, may we just be given the right. And some and in the book she explains like if you're not wearing your veil sometimes they don't they wouldn't even listen to you like there was um there was someone like a diplomat or someone who was visiting iran and then she was more so supporting the movement and she decided not to cover completely her hair but she then didn't listen to her they were like no this is the law you should have abided to it and you didn't so yeah so this book is more so about that and today I want to share what I learned from the book. So welcome. Um, lesson number one. Lesson number one from the book is about being persistent. Um, she didn't have, she didn't have the education she required to be a journalist. So she was going for this interview, and then when she finished the interview, the the owner of the newspaper was asking her, "So where have you studied?" And she didn't. She had not really studied for journalism, and she asked. He asked him so many questions. Her so many questions. She couldn't answer them like she was really not qualified so she was like okay there are so many people who are playing for the role maybe you're going to to choose someone else who is more qualified but the next morning at dawn she was again then the office she had prepared a speech she was like okay fine i know i'm not the most qualified person for this role but just try me out give me like three months with no pay i want to try this job and if it doesn't work out um, you can just let me go. So it's more about being persistent. Sometimes the things we want are not going to be handed over in our lives. So what are we going to do about about that? You can decide to whine about it or what, or you can decide to just go out there and look for opportunities that are there and make the best use of them. So after three months, I think she got the role. But more so, if she did not take that leap of faith, if she did not decide that, okay, fine, then I'm going to go, keep going to his office, I'm going to tell him why I'm the best candidate for this role. Um, I mean, she would not have been where she is. Lesson number two from this book is about the power of dreaming. It's not bad to dream. You can dream and follow up. I mean, she, wa she really wanted to interview President Obama. Uh, so she was following up the American election and um, Barack Obama. President Obama was the first black um, president in America and she was like, okay, fine, I want to, inter to, to interview him. So she actually wrote a letter to the president, addressed it to the U.S. embassy. And surprisingly, she got a, resp a response back and they were like, okay, we don't get 
this frequent we don't get this frequent request from like Iranian journalists to interview like US president and uh, and if, in fact it was actually a crime for her to be near the US embassy and whatnot but she wanted to interview the president and she went and she followed the process and they they gave her a visa. Unfortunately she was not able to interview President Obama but then again she tried and she went to the US and that is where she met her future husband. So I mean the power of dreaming. If you want something it's not bad. You you can dream for it but be ready to put in the work. Put in the work that it's not a, it's not enough to just dream. Okay, this is the dream, but put in the work and most likely you might end up succeeding in your goal. Um, lesson number three from this book is Masi tells us like one of her, her favorite pastimes is going to the cemetery. Like she likes going to the cemetery, cemetery, graveyard, whatever. She likes going to the cemetery and and just being there and she looks at these graves of people who have died who cannot talk and she would like to imagine the kind of lives they lead so she would go to the cemetery and she would sit there and she would be like okay maybe this person on this and this and this maybe this is what he achieved so she always ended up getting energized to do more um which brings me to remind me like i think who is there's someone famous who said like you have to die empty like what is what do you have in you if if there's anything you have in you don't die with it like die empty finish everything that you're meant to finish on this earth i mean finish everything then you die um, even i think robin shama has been saying he says it he says this on his youtube videos like if you go to a graveyard that is the place where there is the most resources i mean people so many people have died there but so many of them have died not fulfilling their dreams so it is always good to always remember that um, you should always want to live your life finish all the dreams you want to finish work hard if you want to achieve something work hard for it so that by the time you die I mean everything that you are meant to do on this earth you've done it lesson number four from this book is not being afraid to fail um, Masi was invited by Shirley Sandberg like um, Shirley Sandberg saw her page on Facebook on why she was encouraging women to remove their veils. So Shelly was interested because she was saying that um, one of the um, why one of the things that um, the page does is to give women who um, didn't have a voice before have a voice. So when Masi went for this talk and she she was just talking about like um, how her not being afraid she was able to tr transform her life. So she was she said. Um, she transformed her life by taking chances, by believing in it herself and not being afraid to fail. Um, she said that, so Masi said that she had launched a campaign only for it to lose momentum and fade away. But she's comfortable with failing. Um, uh, so she's comfortable with failing. I mean, we are going to fail at one point or another, we are going to, to fail. But we should not be afraid. I mean, take those chances. You never know. You might be... You might fail, you, but what if you succeed? So we should not be afraid to fail. So lesson number five that I learned from this book is have something that you believe in, in and work hard for it. Like Masi says that she wants women to be allowed to remove their veil, to have this choice that, okay, fine, if you want to remove your veil, you can remove. And that is why she launched her campaign. That is why, like, if she, she knew that, okay, there's, there are politicians maybe going to Iran, like, she tries to ask them okay so that this message is driven so that this law is abolished in iran so have something you believe in i remember also read this book by call me ted and ted was more about okay fine yes have a career work hard in your career but always have something else apart from your career that you actually believe in that you're actually focused on like in ted's case it was sailing um, i think i i talked on the book i'll leave the link here so and then just have something that Apart from work, something that removes your stress from the normal day to day and work hard towards it. Um, I loved reading the book, given that, like, um, I've never been good with history and whatnot. So, reading books like this, like, I love reading books like this because they also give me a glimpse of the history of countries. Like, I get to learn about countries when I read books like this. So, what are you guys reading now? Like, are you in self quarantine? And what are you reading? I mean. If there's a book you've been meaning to read, maybe this could be the perfect time to read. So, yeah, 
this was my review of this book the wind in my hair my fight for freedom in modern iran so if you want to read it or if you've read it please let me know in the comment section down below and let me know that yeah what you're reading right now and anything you'd recommend me to read thank you so much and i'll see you next time bye